pilgrimage on january 27 1868 mathur babu with a party of some 125 persons set out on a pilgrimage to the sacred places of northern india at vedyanath in bihar when the master saw the inhabitants of a village reduced by poverty and starvation to mere skeletons he requested his rich patron to feed the people and give each a piece of cloth mathur demurred at the added expense the master declared bitterly that he would not go on to banaras but would live with the poor and share their miseries he actually left mathur and sat down with the villagers whereupon mathur had to yield on another occasion 2 years later sri ramakrishna showed a similar sentiment for the poor and needy he accompanied mathur on a tour to one of the latter's estates at the time of the collection of rents for 2 years the harvests had failed and the tenants were in a state of extreme poverty the master asked mathur to remit their rents distribute help to them and in addition give the hungry people a sumptuous feast when mathur grumbled the master said you are only the steward of the divine mother they are the mother's tenants you must spend the mother's money when they are suffering how can you refuse to help them you must help them again mathur had to give in sri ramakrishna's sympathy for the poor sprang from his perception of god in all created beings his sentiment was not that of the humanist or philanthropist to him the service of man was the same as the worship of god the party entered holy banaras by boat along the ganges when sri ramakrishna's eyes fell on the city of shiva where had accumulated for ages the devotion and piety of countless worshippers he saw it to be made of gold as the scriptures declare he was visibly moved during his stay in the city he treated every particle of its earth with utmost respect at the manikarnika ghat the great cremation ground of the city he actually saw shiva with ash covered body and tawny matted hair serenely approaching each funeral pyre and breathing into the ears of the corpses the mantra of liberation and then the divine mother removing from the dead their bonds thus he realized the significance of the scriptural statement that any one dying in banaras attains salvation through the grace of shiva he paid a visit to trilanga swami the celebrated monk whom he later declared to be a real paramhansa a veritable image of shiva
Sri Ramakrishna visited Allahabad at the confluence of the Ganges and the Jamuna and then proceeded to Vrindavan and Mathura hallowed by the legends songs and dramas about Krishna and the gopis here he had numerous visions and his heart overflowed with divine emotion he wept and said o krishna everything here is as it was in the olden days you alone are absent he visited the great woman saint ganga mai regarded by the vaishnava devotees as the reincarnation of an intimate attendant of radha she was 60 years old and had frequent trances she spoke of sri ramakrishna as an incarnation of radha with great difficulty he was persuaded to leave her on the return journey mathur wanted to visit gaya but sri ramakrishna declined to go he recalled his father's vision at gaya before his own birth and felt that in the temple of vishnu he would become permanently absorbed in god mathur honoring the master's wish returned with his party to calcutta from vrindavan the master had bought a handful of dust part of this he scattered in the panchavati the rest he buried in the little hut where he had practiced meditation now this place he said is as sacred as vrindavan in 1870 the master went on a pilgrimage to nadia the birthplace of sri chaitanya as the boat by which he traveled approached the sand bank close to nadia sri ramakrishna had a vision of the two brothers sri chaitanya and his companion nityananda bright as molten gold and with halos rushing to greet him with uplifted hands there they come there they come he cried they entered his body and he went into a deep trance 